Hey there, everybody. It's been a while since uh, I posted anything, and uh, the reason is is that I've been working on uh, some more, you know, semi automation for building, in my case, 2D. But well, it's not really 2D. They are 3D, but in my game is going to be more of a two and a half D uh, concept. So uh, one of the things I've been trying to do is just come up with a better way to uh, be able to model out some rooms and move where doors are and uh, be able to add um, additional actors and lighting in a semi-procedural way. So let me show you what I've come up with here. <clears throat> so this is an example map that I've been working on. And uh, the idea is that these walls here are made out of a spline and then I use a spline mesh component to uh, actually present the wall in that area. Now where you see the doorway here um, going, going into here you see this red square and all that is is a volume that I've repurposed and overloaded to be called an, an exclusion volume. And so wherever that volume is present, then the code that I have that generates the spline mesh components won't present a spline mesh component in that area. So I can show that to you by uh, simply moving this component out of the way. So I'll move it into the hallway here. And then when I go ahead and regenerate when I go ahead and regenerate this, you see all of a sudden my spline mesh has, has filled in. Um, conversely, you know, if I want to move the wall, oh, actually that was uh, wrong. Yep. So if I want to move the wall over here, then all I have to do is move the block there, regenerate my mesh, and now I have my wall where I want it. And this is super useful, right? You can do all sorts of things related to that. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I have is, um, for example, let's take this, this wall here. Uh, I have this being able to generate, um, actually, you know what? Let me just start a new one and, and I'll show you. Uh, I'm just gonna replicate this. So I'll just uh, drag this out. Let me drag this over here and uh, then you'll get a little bit better of an idea of what's going on here. So right now, if I look at this, it is a uh, spline mesh. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change whether or not um, I close the loop on it or not. So as a spline, it starts here, goes up, over, and down but then I don't actually close the loop back to the original thing. So if I, I have my thing coded so that if I click that, it will go ahead and fill that in. I can also change like the number of sides. So let's say I want five sides or I want seven sides. Then I can just go ahead and do that. And the logic I have goes out and redraws the points of the spline which then um, renders out differently, uh, which is super nice. Another thing you're gonna see here is that I have um, what I call spline actors. And in my case, the actor, let me zoom down in here and you can kind of see what it is. It is a torch. So it's like a, uh, a 3D uh, blueprint actor and um, I'm placing it in a procedural way, whoops, in a procedural way throughout my mesh. Now, what I did here was I have the ability to change how many and what type of actor I spawn. So in this case, uh, I'm spawning a torch and I'm spawning, let's say, four of them. But let's say I don't want the, you know, because remember this starts at the beginning of the spline and then evenly distributes it. But let's say I want to put the, 
um, actor in, in the middle here. So all I need to do is then adjust my offset. So I can adjust my offset to, yeah, I just guessed it, about 1500. And now you see that it pushed everything like in a circle around. And now all of my things are in the middle. Um, if I wanted to do it less than that, you see it just pushed it a little bit here and then evenly distributed it around that way. Um, another thing that I can do is just change the number of actors. So let's say I, I want more than four lights. Let's say I want eight lights. So by just adjusting it, I go through, recalculate everything, and spawn all the lights in there procedurally. Um, another nice thing is I can change the percentage chance for it to spawn. Right now it's at 100%. But I could shift it down to, let's say, 40%. Um, and now you see some of the lights randomly just disappeared. And that's because it's a, you know, a random chance there. Um, another thing that's pretty cool is I can uh, offset the, uh, the location. Um, oh, another thing that I forgot to mention is that it's actually attaching to a socket on the mesh and you can choose which socket that is which is kind of nice um if i want to offset this a little more i can uh, adjust this so you see now the the actor has been pushed toward the center a little bit um you know these are just some really nice uh fine adjustment features that i've put in um, I can rotate things, offset them. Um, overall, just really cool. The nice part is then very easily I can generate um, this map that you see before you. I can put in lighting where I want it. I can create doorways where I want them. And I can very easily generate you know, a dungeon or a maze. And this has lots of uses. You don't have to do it with walls. You could do it with all sorts of things. So uh, check out my other videos. I've done some other things related to that. But uh, this is just a, a quick thing that I wanted to throw out there. Um, last thing before I go is I wanted to talk about the recent acquisition of Epic Games. Uh, they purchased Quixel, which uh, is a, the company that owns Megascans. Um, I'm going to do a video on that. There's already been others that have... Uh, put that out there. I'm new to this, uh, Megascans, but I went out, checked it out, and it's really cool. Super, super awesome uh, of Epic Games to do that and release all that content for free. Um, just another reason to use the Unreal Engine. Uh, fantastic resource. So anyway, um, I'm still busy working on my game, and uh, I kind of balance my game time development with... Uh, uh, you know, putting out videos uh, for folks to see. But, uh, you know, I try to put out good content and not just fluff. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or you have other topics you'd like me to cover. Have a great day.